Okay, good to go. Yep. 97.4. Yeah. All right, let's have you go to your urine. Yes. Okay. Would you like some pee sample? Cheers. Being pregnant is a crazy, magical, beautiful experience. There are great moments of joy, but also some moments of fear. For the first time in my life, I have to be completely conscious of every choice I make, as it would directly affect my dear Alma. It's a lot of responsibility to suddenly take in. And when it comes down to birthing choices, an entire world of opportunities and doubts opens up. Personally, the idea of giving birth naturally has always resonated with me. It seems like the right thing to do, the path Mother Nature has laid out for us women and all living creatures. But nowadays, with hospital birthing being the norm, natural birth feels almost like a form of rebellion. Society has instilled this fear in us that giving birth has to be painful. But what if what we have seen portrayed in movies and TV our entire lives is not quite the reality? These are the questions I have been asking myself lately. Very beautiful. Thank you, darling. Where are you going? To the living room. <laughs> I have this very hot date with this Australian artist. But I don't know how he's gonna feel about the fact that I'm pregnant because I haven't told him yet. So I hope he doesn't mind. I can't drink tonight. Oh wow! Your, your booty and your butt, but, uh, your tummy is almost the same. Yeah, I got my JLo ass back. We got a cheese plate oh. and some champagne. Can you believe we're two months away from giving birth? No, it's gone quickly. It's gone really quickly. This is the time you start to talk about birthing preferences, but we already have our mindset on what we want. Personally, because I'm not a high risk, I feel like we should do a natural birth. And by that, I mean no epidurals, no drugs, no anything. Um, I'll be able to breathe in the contractions or waves. And that's, that's my goal. And, uh, you know, Jamie has been supporting me in all this journey. Um, you've had a hospital birth experience before, no? Yep, it was a hospital experience. It definitely was a business. You know, we tried to get us in, get us out, uh, putting pressure on us about, you know, it was, just, it was just a different experience to what we're having now. Um, I'm also at a different point in my life. So, but I support my partner. It's her experience and I'm here to highlight that and to yeah. bring safety, protection and yeah. comfort. I have never seen you in person without a mask. Like... Isn't that crazy? We saw your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and actually had a question for you. I wanted to ask you, since this COVID started, for you, like, have you had more women coming to wanting to, to your birth center to, give, to have a natural birth? We've actually doubled. Doubled our patient load. And you know what's interesting is our patient load is moving. We're already getting December inquiries and filling up for December and then we actually got our first call yesterday for obviously a COVID conception baby did the beginning of January yeah so that means that more women well they're home more right and a lot of them aren't working are actually I, I think it's going to be a huge shift in midwifery mm -hmm. I really do mm -hmm. and we've actually had a couple moms even in this last week that their initial thought was just to birth in a hospital and they had had epidurals and their past deliveries. And this was going to be a different scenario for them of birthing at a birth center without pain medication options and have beautiful deliveries, you know? So I'm just a huge advocate for being part of that change. We're so grateful that, that we, we found you. We found you. <laughs> We're so grateful we found you. We're so grateful we found you before there was even also a rush of yeah. like people because yeah. I always didn't want to have a natural birth in my bathtub or any kind of water. And I was like, I was like, that's the way I want to do it, you know. So even if you were having a home birth and your, so your midwife wouldn't be able to come to your home. 
other yeah. than the layer. Yeah, exactly. I think you're right. Should, I think you're right. Yeah, only, I, only for the layer. Unless if you're like, if you're like a high pregnancy risk, then um, yes, you will have to go to see them. But if your pregnancy is going well, like they're trying to minimize all the doctor's contact. appointments just to not have yeah. any, you know, yeah. contact exposure. Yeah. The only one who's not allowed to in birth, she's the only one not uh, have to wear a mask. I, you, I would have, have every, have to everyone in the room is in home birth. even yeah. in a home birth. Yeah, she's the only one who can't wear doesn't have to wear a mask. Yeah, and also they're only allowing the husband and the doula at the moment. Doula. Yeah. At yeah, the, yeah, so at the doulas, yeah. Yeah, 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 and that's it. Yeah. yeah, I keep saying to my women, if I could give you a hug, I would, but I. You know, I know I'm not allowed to. <laughs> it's just, yeah. it's so intimate. Midwifery is incredibly intimate. And what we do is such a, you know, again, it's a touchy-feely kind of job that it's so hard not to do that. I hate it. <laughs> I really hate it. So we're taking our pets uh, to get a haircut because they're Maine Coons and they get very, uh, dread they get dreadlocks. So we got to do it once a year. And as you can hear them, they're very much in distress. What <laughs> is in the front? They don't like, they do not like going in the car. No. no. <laughs> you're gonna be fine, honey. Yeah, you're gonna be fine. You're gonna be fine, boo boo. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice doing Wolverine sounds. <laughs> <laughs> so Jamie has started a new series where he's painting our cats. This is Wolverine, that's Spartacus, and this is Alma and I. I look forward to the day of my birthing, the day I meet my baby. I trust my body's innate wisdom to do what it is designed to do. The way I approach hypnobirthing um, is that it's all about moving women from a headspace that's very anxious, very overwhelmed. You know, it can be outright fear of birth and moving them towards believing that it can be a positive experience. The way I do that is through education and helping women understand that planning and preparing for their birth is well worth it. And if they put that work in when they're pregnant um, and you know, have those conversations with their partner, have those conversations with their caregiver, really think about what they want from their experience and then plan and prepare for that experience, then it will be a positive experience. And you carry that through, like it, it helps in the transition to parenthood. It helps you formulate that idea of who you're going to be as a mother or a father. So you're not just in preparing for birth, it, it's bigger than that. Mm -hmm. I think two things that I took personally after taking your course was one, like, having this uh, constant communication with the baby, you know, like, because you know that you should do it, but I guess with hypnobirthy, because it's like such a daily practice, like now even when I listen to the affirmations or the relaxation, like I make a conscious, at least I give 20 minutes a day just to talk to my baby, just her and I. So Alma gets a little massage and she knows she's loved and cared even before she's out of the belly into this crazy world. <laughs> That's exactly what the goal is, is to have women and their partners finish class feeling good about what is to come. Um, you know, because so many of society's messages about pregnancy, about birth, about parenthood involve, you know, pain and trauma and being uncomfortable and being exhausted and having it be this really hard slog. And it doesn't have to be like that. Like it's not actually meant to be like that. Like this is a life-changing experience. It's physically life-changing. It's emotionally life-changing. The entire, your entire physiology changes when you're pregnant and, and when you give birth. Like you're actually a different person after you have a baby than you were before in every sense of the word. So I wish women looked at the, looked at birth as this opportunity to change themselves for the better. You know, we don't get opportunities as adults to change like this often. 
We are getting ready for our social distance baby shower slash baby blessings. This was actually our dear friend Kamala's idea to make candles for each one of the guests. So when I'm about to give birth, you're gonna text our guests and you're gonna tell them to light up a candle so that I can have a beautiful and safe delivery of baby Allah. I got this beautiful mask that I got it because it's gonna match my outfit. But since it's, this one is just made out of lace and cotton, um, I made an N95 filter that is gonna go right under the mask for double protection. Okay, 96.7. You're good to come in, Cam. <laughs> oh, so beautiful. Tree. Maybe we should cut him a little. I can't even ex see any expression or anything on his face. It was a very bizarre experience. <laughs> no hugs, no, no hugs. touches. Nobody, yeah. nobody got close, got close to me. Everybody was super respectful. Uh, and you know, even I think a week before I was having my doubts of even having it because of the coronavirus yeah. rising. I was like, are we doing the right thing? And then we thought, you know what? If we follow all the guidelines and if we do it right, and then this is the only time we're going to get to see our friends before I give birth. The, the one and only time my friends are going to be able to see me pregnant in person. Alma, you are the future of our planet. I wish for you a new beginning, new consciousness, and the start of a new, connected, and loving world. You have some work to do. I believe in you, <laughs> Uncle Helix. <laughs> And this is just an example. I draw strength from those who came before me. I trust in the wisdom of my body. I'm supported by a loving family and community. Oh, beautiful. So everyone here is writing a special message for you oh. and Jamie and Alma. And then I'm going to make this, put these on here, and then we can string them up and take them to the birthing center. Beautiful. Or, and you can hang them above her crib. And I it's love just a it. message from your community oh. that loves you. Thank you, Kat. Yeah. All this time has been such a good moment of self self reflection for Jamie and I, like really getting to know what's important. You know, like how much we miss our community, our friends. How important is like to be touched or a hug. You know, like the fact that nobody can put their their hands on Alma sometimes makes me so sad. But just having you here and feeling the energy, I just feel like all the love. You know, it's like and this is exactly what I needed to feel a little bit of human connection. If it was a week later, like right now, we would have not done it. You know, like they're, they're trying to, it's only weeks away before schools reopen here in California. They're now saying they're not going to reopen. The COVID-19 pandemic has surged to new highs as the U.S. marked more than 50,000 additional cases in a single day, a new record. Florida shattered a new record, over 11,500 new cases in a single day. It's unprecedented and every single day brings new experiences. Some beaches that were allowed to stay open are packed. Myrtle Beach in South Carolina, this one in San Diego, as both states battle rapidly increasing cases. Doctors say there will be a price to pay for all these close gatherings. It's not a matter of if schools should reopen, it's simply a matter of how. They must fully open and they must be fully operational. Uh, the science should not stand in the way of this. Uh, and as Dr. Scott Atlas said, I thought this was a good quote. Of course we can do it. Everyone else in the Western world, our peer nations are doing it. We are the outlier here. We go in and we get the virus and bring it back to our own families. Then we've hurt the people that we love. If I don't go in, then I risk being unemployed and it's a no-win situation. This is not a confusing issue. We are in a pandemic, and if we want to prevent this pandemic and get people back to work and get kids back to school, people have to put their masks on. Uh, the economy was shut down. The restaurants and bars were all shut down again this week. Uh, hopefully we can get Paloma out here for Christmas. But at this point in time, we're, the whole country is going in the wrong direction. Yeah, and we're in for the long run. Like the reality is not the same. That's realistically, just... this is going to take a couple of years yeah. until we really, truly go back to normality. Can't wait for 2022. <laughs> <laughs> we might as well just have another baby. This is right <laughs> away. Let's get this done. Them. It's true. Get them out. Get them out. At the end, we go back. My sweet Alma, your papa and I have made the decision of welcoming you into this world in the most natural way possible. 
Because of the pandemic, Jamie and the staff at our birthing center will have to wear a mask, and our doula will be the only other person allowed in the birthing room with us. These are small sacrifices we have to make given the circumstances. In some hospitals, the birthing woman's partner isn't even allowed in the room. I cannot imagine giving birth without Jamie by my side. Therefore, I am very grateful to be delivering at a birthing center that is more understanding of our needs. We feel very confident about our choice, and I am very much looking forward to welcoming you, as it will be the greatest rite of passage of my life. <laughs>